Hello, my soccer universe. Uh, knockout stage is for the Africa Cup of Nations, AFCON, as I want to say, is underway. We had two matches today, and without saying too much, penalties, 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 penalties were the big story, namely missed penalties, especially by the big teams. But we'll get to that. First of all, I decided to wear my Mali shirt. Yes, I promised I wear Burkina Faso if I don't have any shirts of any of the involved teams. However, Burkina Faso is not there. Mali is there, but I am not sure they play the Cote d'Ivoire. I'm not sure if they will be favored. And this is such a great African shirt that I thought I'll feature it in this tournament. It also features all three national colors of two of the uh, participants today. Let's start at the early match, which I started watching from the 30th minute on, and you know, from highlights I could already get it. There was not too much happening. There really was not too much happening. It was a, your classically AFCON game that is played in the heat. Morocco against Benin. Um, at first, uh, you know, the, my TV showed a little bit off. I, it seemed that the Moroccan pants are black and not green, but you know, then it made a whole lot of sense to have Morocco play in their first jerseys. And uh, yellow Benin, I really like this one. You had all three major African colors, those three here, in there, and it made for a really nice matchup. And the Benin jersey with all this um, green and red accents all over the place, kind of a little bit pattern. Reminded me of the 90s, but in a nice way. I think it was a really nice matchup, uh, color-wise. In the game, first half, I mean, the whole game, Morocco had more possession. Uh, they had a really talented side, as we could see when they beat the uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, the other two games, it didn't show as much, but very talented side, having much of the possession, trying to go forward, uh, but you know, it was, I don't know if it was the heat or whatever, or the lack of atmosphere, which is another problem, but you know, in Africa, there are not that many fans traveling. Um, but yeah, it was sluggish, it was slow, it was yeah not that great to watch, but at least they had a few chances, and mostly it came over Ziyech. Um, who really uh, tried to put the stamp on this game. But as we already know for Ajax, Ziyech is a great dynamic player, but he's also great in missing chances all over the place. And this is exactly what uh, happened most of the time today as well. So yeah, uh, halftime nil-nil. Could expect more. After the half, Benin decided to be a little bit more proactive and actually try to get something. Well, they got a corner. 53rd minute, corner comes in, and Adi Liu takes it directly, puts it into the net. Complete shock, I think, all, all around. Benin had scored by trying to attack for not more than 10 minutes. Um, came literally out of nowhere. By the time, we also had to realize that the referee doesn't like dissent at all. I mean, he was dishing out yellow cards, not necessarily for fouls, but if you had your mouth open, uh, he was very quick uh, issuing ye yellow cards. So uh, that was a warning. Uh, for Morocco then, um, you know, you gotta do something. So Belanda comes off and Sufian Bufal comes on and he immediately was about to make an uh, impact. Uh, after a cross, he heads the ball nicely on the ground, but it also, wide the ground, but it goes high, but also over the bar. Um, but in the end, you know, Morocco really tried. There was, um, then the big, uh, the big moment came when uh, Jordan Adioti kind of had the ball near the, his own box uh, and very nonchalantly uh, dribbling back and forth. He is a little bit pressed by Buzufa, tries to get out of it, but Buzufa quickly dispossesses him and plays the ball almost immediately to Yusuf Nesiri, who is clear on goal, makes it 1-1 Morocco. Gotta say, at the moment deserved, although Benin put up a spirited fight, but if you are playing with fire, you're bound to uh, uh, to pay for it, uh, especially if you have such a um, 
routine side on the other side of the field. And yeah, Morocco then uh, wanted to go for the win and they got a big chance when Stefan Sessegnon in the last minute of stoppage time pretty clearly fouls uh, Hakimi and Ziyech steps up, puts the goalkeeper on the wrong uh, side uh, of his shot, but he hits the post. Last kick of the game, the post. Morocco could have been on. Nope, doesn't happen anymore. So it goes to overtime and the first notable thing is that after a quick intermission there's uh, Khaled Adenon again talking to the ref, saying something, gets a sent off yellow red. Stupid, absolutely stupid. So you hand uh, Morocco the advantage for about 25 minutes and Morocco has chances again through Ziyech, uh, um, then uh, Buffal. Those were the main drivers of the Moroccan attack um, and in the second uh, overtime period Ziyech has a good chance but puts it over the net. Penalties unfortunately unavoidable. Benin wins the toss, Benin goes first. Verdun scores, Idrissi scores for Morocco. Uh, Gilia, Gila, Gila scores for Benin and then Buffal steps up and misses the uh, net really, really badly. I mean, Idrissi had a really great penalty. I think Buffal went the same, but it goes over. Then Anan uh, makes it 3 1 for Benin, made, meaning it puts already a lot of pressure on Ennesiri, the scorer of the equalizer. But the goalkeeper, Alagbe, gets a hand on it and it goes via the bar out and so uh, Mama Seibu can uh, step up. He looked a little bit insecure but in the end he converted safely. Um, you know my wife even said 3-1 you have to take a penalty to win it all. That's probably one of the easiest penalties you will take. There's absolutely no pressure on you. Makes it and we have the first upset in Benin beating Morocco and Morocco really was one of the teams I thought that could go deep in this tournament. I thought they had a semi-final in them, easily. Not anymore. Although, they would have had to play the winner of the other game, which was Uganda versus Senegal, and we know exactly who is favored there. Of course, Senegal with their great uh, crop of players around Koulibaly, Sadio Mane, and uh, um, by Nyang, there's also Ismail Sar. you know. This is a really, really loaded squad that um, most of the time would everyone would favor to win the AFCON. The matchup against Uganda was interesting uh, because it was the nightmare for colorblind people. Uganda played, of course, in their red with black pants and Senegal somewhat surprisingly played in green, which I really did not expect. So yeah. Uh, I also have to say that uh, some of the Ugandan players are really strong people. I mean, like oak trees, the goalkeeper, and I think it was Bevis Mugabe, uh, absolutely uh, bears of men that I, I was quite impressed. I mean, Kalidou Koulibaly is one of the best defenders in, in, in the world, but he didn't seem to have, for lack of a better word, the girth of these players. Well, Senegal controlled most of the game, quickly showed that they are the better team uh, and you know through a quick mi uh, mistake the ball falls to Mane uh, who takes a shot that is clear, uh, it goes over uh, the goalkeeper on Nyango makes it 1-0 before that. I mean on Nyango had two CAC situations where he is going out of the box trying to tackle a player. It was, I think, all in the second minute um, when he felt Sar. I think it would have been at least a yellow, uh, which he got. But you could have made an arg argument for a red there. And then a little bit later, he wants the same thing on Niang, who can actually round him, but then cannot get a shot off. Senegal was dominant, but you know, after the goal through Mane, Sen uh, Uganda came a little bit out, and you could uh, actually see that they were deserving of the spot in the next round. They are not uh, that much of a minnow anymore. More and yeah, they played nice. This game was actually the better one of the two, I have to say, despite the other one going to penalties. But the first half was so r bad. It was also a little bit disappointing. I mean, it's the Cairo International Stadium. There were hardly any spectators there. Second half, pretty much the same picture with maybe Uganda trying a little bit more now. 
However, then Senegal gets the big chance. Uh, Manet is felled again by Olin Yango, and by that time, you might argue this was another yellow, so he could have been sent off. He didn't. Um, Manet steps up in, I think it was the 60th minute, steps up, takes the shot, and it's saved. His second penalty miss at this F count. So, yeah, after that, um, not much happening because the Senegal defense was outstanding, getting everything out of, out of the way and making a statement. You know, even if our attack is not firing or missing penalties, we in the defense, we can get it done. Yes, it was just Uganda. However, Senegal moves on 1 0, maybe not the most um, impressive of results. But moving on, you did. I mean, you had the example, Morocco did not. So now in the first quarterfinal that's uh, fixed and also the first quarterfinal that we played, we have Senegal playing Benin in the 30th of June stadium in Cairo, which is not the two games we're playing in Cairo, but in the other two stadiums. Uh, if we look tomorrow, we'll get Nigeria versus Cameroon and Egypt versus South Africa. Nigeria, Cameroon, that's of course. The big one, really looking forward to that, although, I, again, I don't expect much of a match there. Now, lastly, if you look at the bracket, um, we already see that Senegal and Benin. Uh, Senegal gets a kind of a nice uh, draw because the other quarterfinals between Madagascar, the DRC, Ghana and Tunisia, that doesn't seem all that bad. I think Senegal in the final is not unrealistic, but again, the games need to be played. I would have handed it to Morocco today. It did not happen, so never say never. But the lower part of the bracket, clearly the harder one. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games today. If you watched any, uh, or if this uh, quick summary was enough for you, uh, I will probably link um, to the highlights from the CAF, from CAF which I'm usually not commenting very short, but at least they show something. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.